So this is a list on 10 chemical companies that are innovating and rapidly growing. Let's check them out. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you are new and just stumble upon my channel, don't hesitate to subscribe. In this channel, we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. And this video is exactly on that. We're going to be talking about 10 chemical companies that are either using very innovative technologies or are creating very interesting products for the chemical industry or maybe not directly for chemical industries, but for other industries. I selected these companies based on several criteria. For instance, number one, it must be directly related with chemical industries or chemical productions. Number two, chemical engineers must be working there or either working or founded the company. Number three, they must still be independent because as I checked out many companies, they rapidly get funding and eventually sell to either BASF or Dow Chemical or other chemical companies that are huge and are willing to invest in very innovative companies. Number four, they must be relatively young Number five, they must be very innovative or maybe creating their own technologies or research and development. Number six, they must be rapidly growing or expanding and creating more products. Number seven is that they must be varied. So I know that there is a lot of things in the biotech world or maybe nanotechnologies, but I don't want to focus on those specific alone. I want to add other fields or maybe other technologies that I think are interesting or maybe that some students or maybe young engineers may not think about when we talk about these companies and we're going to be checking them out as well. Okay guys, so let's get to the very first company which is Group 14. This company is essentially a battery technology company. You know that electrical vehicles or already our uh, phones, computers, laptops and all that require batteries. And it's very interesting to see chemical engineers working directly on this. Founded to enable the electrification of everything from tiny medical, consumer and commercial devices to every possible flavor and size of transportation. So that's already like giving you a hint that this is also towards EV. Brings a new finely tuned performance capabilities to the era of lithium silicon batteries. So I don't know about you guys, but I am only familiar with lithium batteries. Lithium silicon batteries are something new to me. I know that they exist, but I haven't checked out what are they into. So definitely go and check it out. So they are using composite materials and industrial process. So as you can see, they have R&D in the material itself and they also have industrial processes in the sense that they want to produce in mass scale to make them reliable answer to the cost. Remember, as you produce uh, more materials, it is cheaper, bigger scale and better performance. Okay, so let's check out the technology. We have the highest performing battery material on the market, which sounds very promising. So essentially, it's energy storage reimagining. It's amorphous and nano-sized silicon, which is 10 times more capable than graphite by mass. Well, sounds great. What do we have here? Some statistics, cycles. So something on batteries is this cycle concept, which I typically associate towards entropy. And it means that you have only certain amount of cycles of recharging until the battery is either non-functional, non-efficient or non-working. So apparently this is great. I don't want to get that much into details. I just want to let you know guys that if you are into batteries, this is a great company. The second company I want to present you guys is Pure Cycle. That's the name of the company. Let's check out the website. And this is essentially a company that's in the business of recycling polypropylene. And if you're not familiar with polypropylene, it's essentially the polymer or plastic that is produced from propylene, which is the three carbon uh, monomer. And you may encounter it very often in the caps of PET bottles. For instance, if you just got your favorite soda, the cap, when you open it, that plastic itself is polypropylene. So it's a little bit harder than PET. And you want that because you want a material that is a little bit stronger than PET itself. It has other applications, but essentially you can imagine polypropylene as being a plastic of either single use or many uses. 
let's head here into the very first thing that you can see. Uh, consumer use, so the consumer uses the plastic itself, then the consumer throws it away, either goes to a landfill or to the garbage or most likely to the ocean. That's the typical scenario. What they are projecting here is that they want to recycle it here. So what they do is send it to Pure Cycle and I really like the name Pure meaning that they are going back to like 100% purity. They recycle it here and send it as virgin material. I don't know if you are familiar with the recycling of PET, but what happens is once you recycle PET, it cannot be sent as virgin PET since it's not actually virgin. In the sense that the polymer is not recently produced. And the interesting part right here is that apparently they are uh, selling this product as a virgin material. So let's read a little bit more here. We view plastic waste as a renewable resource that can be used infinitely. Our groundbreaking patented recycling process developed by PNG separates color, odor, and contaminants from plastic waste feedstock and converts it into ultra pure recycled polypropylene. So you can say this is UPRPP. So let's go to the news. I want to learn more about this. Pure Cycle announces partnership with Mitsui, which is a very famous Japanese chemical company. It's going to be developing ultra pure recycled polypropylene plant in Japan. We have Pure Cycle partners with SK Global Chemical, which is essentially a South Korean chemical company, to open a ultra pure recycling plant in South Korea. So you can see this is a company that is innovative in the sense that polypropylene was typically not recycled as virgin material. Typically you will see it as a recycled second class or second quality plastic. And now apparently what they're dealing is a plastic that in theory can be assigned as virgin. Now it's time for the third company, which is called Change Foods. And as the name implies, you can imagine that this will be towards food or food and beverage and so and actually it is. I wanted to add this because I know several friends of mine that are in the California area working in this kind of industries that are, I don't like to say artificial foods, but essentially that's what it is. Let's go here so you get my idea. Okay, so change foods. Why change is essentially cheese, artificial cheese. And what they do is try to create via biotechnology or chemical processes cheese that we as humans will sense as cheese they have the same structure the same flavors the same same everything but there is a twist guys there is no animals involved here so we are not getting the cows we are not getting it from milk we are not getting cheese produced from other type of milks this is actual cheese without the cow our approach does not rely on destructive animal agriculture, which is one of the most important issues right now, right? With global warming and all that, that agriculture and especially uh, all beef or all these animal feedstock is destroying our environment. And not only that, also we use a lot of uh, water to water the crops for these animals. We use a lot of water for the animals themselves. And what else do we have here? So we're talking about 10 times less water than the normal cheese, which that will be a long grade. But the most important part, and I actually try to think this as real state, and not only that, also as an environmental perspective, it uses 100 times less land than the normal. So let's say that you have one kilo of cheese. You can imagine that you will have 100 kilos for the same amount of land. So that's kind of crazy, right? So you, can you get the, what's the point on all this? It's not only about the environment itself, but it's also about real estate and also about water, which is also getting very important nowadays. We also have five times less energy. That's also great and welcome. And 25 times less feedstock, which is great. We harness the power of microbes to create a real dairy protein. So this is, why I'm telling you this is more into biotech, but remember that chemical engineering needs to shift or at least a certain amount of chemical engineering needs to start doing some biotech because this is the future. As you can see, what they do is have these microbes, they produce proteins, fats and flavors through precision fermentation. 
And this is very common guys, it's, it's like just reproducing material towards a ends of production. So you know that a cow could be assigned as a reactor they produce, or technically speaking, a bioreactor. They get an input, which is grass and water. They get a output, which is typically milk. So you can see the cow as a bioreactor. It takes something in, right, which is actually, I don't know, maybe grass and water. It reacts with all, of course, the complex processes that has the stomach, the intestines, and all that. I'm not going to get that technical. And it produces milk. That milk is very powerful because with milk, we can drink it, we can convert it into cream, cheeses, yogurt, a lot of things. So if you can get in that point, into this video reactor, you don't need the cow itself. You can now work with that bioreactor. So I will be adding the link because of all the industries that I selected, I really enjoy this one. It's kind of crazy to imagine that with a simple bioreactor, you can avoid the killing of mass animals. And not only that, save a lot of in real estate, save a lot of water, resources, and of course, in energy. The fourth company I'm going to be talking about is Biotech. And I don't mean bio as B-I-O, I actually mean it as bay o tech I don't know. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. Sorry for you guys if you work there. I don't know how to proper pronounce this, but essentially it's a company which is producing hydrogen. Mostly trying to solve the problem of how to get hydrogen and the displacement, transportation, storage of hydrogen. This is a company that works in localized hydrogen production. The more efficient, less expensive alternative for your hydrogen supply. Probably you're wondering why do you want hydrogen? Well, hydrogen is used extensively as a fuel, but I don't know if they also have this as a feedstock for chemical companies. So let's check it out. Biotech is now your single point of contact for low cost, low carbon hydrogen, supplied, reliable, when and where you need it. Okay, sounds great. Kind of like the Uber of hydrogens. So probably you're wondering how do they do it? This is essentially small, powerful, modular reformers, so essentially small hydrogen plants. And what they do is try to locate it in a very important or strategic point, and then they transport it via high pressure, high capacity storage trailers. So that sounds like solving the problem, but the idea here is not going old school in the sense that we will be producing a very huge amount of a uh, chemical complex, but going in the reverse. We want to produce very small, modular, strategic points for hydrogen production. What I want to do in biotech or biotech is to check out what other products and services they offer. The main one is of course hydrogen overall, but they also have the so-called biogas, which is the hydrogen at low cost, low carbon production, hydrogen and delivered on demand. Sounds great. They also have the transportation and storage. In case you are into that, they will send you these uh, trailers that you can see here in the background. They have these mini uh, tanks for hydrogen. So you can just order your supply of hydrogen and you will get it very quickly. They also have fueling in case you want hydrogen for fueling services. Remember once again, hydrogen is a uh, fuel, so you can get it as well. And finally, yet not least, the more efficient, less expensive way to go, which is on-site hydrogen production. So let's say you are a chemical company, you will require a certain amount of hydrogen. Instead of going into the traditional route, this is another way to go. This is the next company I wanted to show you, and it is CMC Materials. It's all about electronic materials and materials for semiconductors and all that. So let's check it out. As you can see, the very first thing you will see is how does a chemical engineer ends up in this. This seems very like mechatronics, robotics, uh, computer science stuff. And the interesting part right here is that actually these solutions or the products are about electronic materials, CMP pads, slurries, electron electronic chemicals, and of course performance materials. And remember that whenever we talk about materials, a chemical engineer has the task of producing such chemicals. So let's go and open each one of the products. So the very first product is a CMP pad, which is essentially a chemical mechanical polishing pad. Those are used for semiconductors. And essentially what we have here is state of the art polyurethane chemistry and engineering advances to exact hardness, pore sizes, compressibility, and groove patterns. 
essentially are these consumables or these materials used for further production of semiconductors and they have a lot actually they have this one right here is the smaller faster one then we have this one right here the thermoplastic polishing pads offer the optimal balance of best in the class performance the second product is right here cmp which is essentially pretty similar to this one right here but this one are pads as you can see these are solid flat circles or let's say panels and you have these lorries as you can see these are solid liquidish mixtures both are for semiconductors actually as you can see here these revolutionary products established our reputation as a technology leader in the semiconductor industry so as you can imagine this is a very important product and then we have electronic chemicals it sounds very interesting actually i'm into this because these are chemicals that are used in these type of industries uh, the semiconductor industry and all that these chemicals are going to be used typically in semiconductor manufacturing photo mask hard drive production flat panel display and photovoltaic which is essentially solar panels the products are all here you have acids bases and solids and I know that this may sound more into the chemical side, but the interesting part right here is that these chemicals are towards these type of markets or these type of industries that require, let's say, a higher degree of uh, specialization. And then we have materials technologies, which are essentially more into the semiconductor industry. And then we have performance chemicals. They have several brands right here, but just to uh, read some of them, seal well, as you can imagine, is about sealing and welding high performance products for valve and actuator maintenance. You have Valtex, essentially valves technology, and you have QED, essentially more state-of-the-art MRF polishing, more into the semiconductor industry. Let's continue with the next company, which is a biotech or let's say green chemistry company, and it's called Equa or Equor, sorry for my Latin or French, not quite sure what's this about but it's essentially a anti-biofilm or anti-fouling company. And probably you're wondering what's that? Let's check it out. Let's go for the consumer route first. I have it right here. So the main problem is that we have bacteria and fungi and it grows over all surfaces, all products like soaps, cleaners, food, water, etc. Therefore, we require something to kill that. And let's imagine Walmart or Target or these type of companies which have a lot of products for long times exposed to air and dust and all that. You can imagine that if you only clean this with something like on this surface or only that, you will eventually start growing more like fungi or mold or something that it's not quite nice for the consumer. So what these companies do is essentially get bactericide and fungicide to kill all these bacteria and fungi. The problem is that most of these are chemicals. And what this company wants to do is to shift that towards a more friendly, non-toxic, greener chemistry for our consumers. Now let's go to the industrial applications of Equor. They have several problems. As you can imagine, the industry has the main issue that the water is very useful for biomaterials. So they produce or they grow in our piping systems, in our filters, pumping and all that. So what you want to favor is either a pretreatment or a treatment or a maintenance. So most likely the pretreatment of water will be easier for the process engineer. If you have clean water or at least um, water that is pretreated so the materials will not grow that easily or readily, that will be great. And this is what Aqua have here. Aqua water either pretreatment or treatment. They are non-toxic, they are green, eco-friendly and sustainable or you may go into more bio which will be the application of algae and yeast productivity treatments they will enhance the production of algae and yeast cultivation which most likely will be killing all the biomaterial that's getting stuck in our process the following company it's called genomatica or genomatica and as you can imagine this is more into the biotech or bioengineering uh, industry but it is very important and relevant because what they want to do is to convert existing chemical materials or materials that are created via chemical ways they want to shift this uh, from traditional chemical engineering towards biotechnology and bioengineering and what i want to do here is very quickly go into this tab and check out the products 
So they have POBDO, Browning Type, Bio Nylon. This is very interesting. Uh, textile industry is a very nasty uh, industry. So it's very interesting to see that there are ways in which biotech or bioengineering is substituting traditional chemical uh, processes in the production of nylon. Polyamides, long chain, mutadien, and specialty chemicals. So I already opened the tab right here. PDO, or as they call it, P BDO, is using athletic apparel, running shoes, electronics, and a lot of other applications. Then we have Brony Tide BG, which is one tree butylen glycol. It's used essentially in cosmetics, personal care, and healthy stuff. Here they have it, you can see pretty straightforward stuff for creams, face, skin cares, and all. We have polyamide intermediates and bio nylon. These are the technical concepts, but essentially this is textile. They want it for carpet, clothing, fibers, plastics, and so on. The interesting part right here is that you can check out how the processes are being substituted or what are the biotech additions to the normal applications. Long chain chemicals such as alcohol, esters, ketones. This is mostly into uh, polymer industry mostly using flavor, fragrances, uh, solvents, and so on. But at the end, which is a very important one, if you already know, this is used in tires and other type of polymers, but mostly tires. So it's very great to see that there's bioengineering in tires. The following industry is called Oterra, and it's actually towards the catalyst industry. Let's check it out. The oil industry must address today's sulfur gaps, so probably going into processes that desulfurize either fuels or other type of uh, materials. Otterra's novel desulfuration technology exploits the natural tendencies of oil impurities to effectively treat feedstock. So they have 65% less greenhouse gas emission, 50% less capital and operating cost, which is always great. Uh, as a process engineer, what you want to propose is always better, more efficient and cheaper. And apparently, let me go, they have three technologies. Let me open these trees. The very first one, flex desulfurization, traditional hydroprocessing versus autoress flex desulfurization. I'm not going to read the traditional one. Essentially, you add hydrogen to remove hydrogen sulfide in the applications of temperatures and pressures. Autoress, let's see what's up with this. They add oxygen to remove sulfur and other impurities in the oil by catalysation and oxidizing reactions at room temperature, so that's great. Room temperature, lower temperatures, always great to operate this way. This process significantly reduces capital and operating cost. Flex ULS, which is essentially a sulfur polishing. Reduce sulfur and nitrogen content in distillates and crude to ultra low levels without hydrogen. This is very important, guys. If you want to remove sulfur, what typically people do is add hydrogen. So you add temperature pressure conditions as well as hydrogen. And what happens is that the sulfur bonds break within the fuel and they bond to the hydrogen. So you form hydrogen sulfide, which later on is going to be recovered and treated. But it's very awesome to see that they are not using hydrogen, which is the main feedstock for hydro treating fuels. So I'm very curious on seeing how do they do it. It's a novel adsorption based process. So this is great. So the previous one was technically just a reacting or let's say a very uh, high exothermic process in which you have the breaking of these chains and formation of hydrogen sulfide. So this is a straightforward reactor. But here we have a adsorption process, which sounds great. So you have, okay, this diagram should be helpful. We have our high sulfur storage, you use distillation, you get out the gasoline, but you are left with the diesel, which is heavier one. High sulfur diesel. And okay, so this is the unit that they are proposing, the solvent recycling, and this must be adsorption. So you treat it, you get away via the sulfur byproduct removal, and then you go back here with the clean ultra low sulfur diesel. 60% nitrogen reduction, depending on the fit, okay? And up to 70% reduction in GHG emissions, which is essentially CO2 and hydrogen sulfide, or SO2, yeah, SO2, SO3. Wow, that sounds interesting. Definitely worth checking out the industry of catalysts. The following company is called Carbon Free, and as you can imagine, it's all about the CO2 emissions and how to capture them or how to 
get those and avoid them going to the uh, atmosphere. And here is the main question. How do we address the CO2 emissions from industrial plants while we achieve the road to net zero by 20? And what I'm going to be checking out directly are the technologies. So they have several ones. And the first one will be SkyCycle. And it's a carbon free technology. It provides CCUS, which is essentially carbon capture and utilization storage solution. Essentially you get the CO2 and hide it or convert it into another material, solving the high cost of transportation and storage infrastructure. It has a ultra low penalty technology providing a carbon negative impact. And here's an example of the equipment. So this is the second application, SkyMine, and this appears to be a mine in the sky. Not really, but it is essentially the first and largest industrial scale carbon mineralization facility. Essentially what they do is they get all the carbon dioxide, they transport it, and they convert it into a solid material that is useful. In this case, they have baking soda. 50,000 tons of CO2 per year is captured from cement flue gas and it converts it into carbon negative baking soda. So this is a win-win. So the cement industry happy for avoiding all that CO2 uh, emitted to the ambient or atmosphere and you get the baking soda to sell in the markets. And the final company I wanted to show you is also a battery company, but not only a battery overall, but mostly into EV, electrical vehicles, batteries. So it's called Octillion. Let's check it out. So what we have here, let's check out the solutions. So they have passenger vehicles, typically called automobiles, the ones that you will be using. But more importantly, they have energy storage solutions for the grid. So when we talk about electrical vehicle batteries, we're not talking about only the batteries themselves. We're talking about all the infrastructure, the charging points and how they will be connected and all the grid, all the network. So this is a very interesting engineering challenge for anyone that wants to get into that. Okay, so now we are in the products tabs and what I want to check is essentially the models. And if you're into batteries, you will like this. Uh, I just want to show it to you guys how they can be presented. And now we are in Octillion technology tab. Uh, what I want to show you here very quickly is this one right here, the lithium ion battery cells. And finally, state of the art thermal management. Essentially what you want to do is have a chemical or mechanical engineer working in how the battery uh, behaves under several thermal conditions. For instance, very cold ones or very hot ones. Actually, right here we have it. Our engineers conduct extensive theoretical modeling and real world testing to ensure our design intent is manifest in every battery we ship. So that's great that they are also working in modeling, probably using some CAD software or so, in order to see whether or not the batteries are worth the design and production. So those were the companies I wanted to show you guys, and I know that there are many other chemical companies worth checking out. But for now, what I wanted to show you is all these companies that maybe, especially if you're a young engineer, do not imagine a chemical engineer working there. For instance, the nanotechnology ones, the battery ones, semiconductors. Maybe you were familiar, but not quite sure on what they were doing and if chemical engineers can work there. And what I really love from these companies is that we should not stick always to the traditional way of doing chemical stuff or chemical processes or products. I really hope that this video helped you to broaden your ideas and to see that this is not only about chemical processes or chemicals being produced in mass scale. Chemical engineers are working towards producing more chemicals, more materials and more products that help our society. And these companies are for sure doing that. And before I go, please let us know guys what other companies you think are relevant or maybe industries that you may want to hear from. Maybe you think that certain company or industry should have been mentioned. Let me know and we can prepare something for you. For now, that will be it on my behalf. I'll see you in the next video.